You're right. Hi everybody, Mark Cogan here for the Photographer Academy. Welcome to Live at Five, and today it's baby photography. Uh, we should have had a real baby here with us today, uh, except because of the lockdown in Wales, we, ba we basically can't have any clients in. Um, so we're using Polly. Uh, she's our little kind of um, doll that we bought many, many year years ago for some of our training and everything else with it and things really. So we're going to be kind of talking through an entry level into kind of getting going with, sim with simple light, light, lighting, where, where to position it, the, pit, the pitfalls of kind of what I see with a lot of photography and fingers crossed by the end of this kind of live se session, it'll give you some kind of um, encouragement to basically go out and shoot. So let's quickly talk about the set. Uh, I'm using the Elinchrom D, uh, D Light ones. You can't see them just because they're behind the soft boxes. In fact, it's the kit. So it's the kit soft bo boxes. I'm not doing anything spe uh, special in here at all. So what we're look, uh, looking at is lights, uh, soft boxes, and stands. Around about the 500 quid, pretty much will actually work themselves to death. So if you're having to go into clients' homes, setting up a small stu uh, studio in your home, then basically it's dead, an entry level. Um, every, everything else then is basically um, from Ikea, except for uh, a little bit of a bowl, a baby bowl, that uh, we were given by Click Props uh, many, many year, year, years ago uh, when my grandson had just, had just been, or about to be born, and my wife was nagging me about getting some images done. And, and basically, over the past 35 years of my career, obviously I've photographed a lot of babies, um, but... Pretty much in the past 10 to 12 years, we've seen this new wave of newborn kind of imagery and things kind of coming in. And, and some of it I absolutely love. Uh, for me, though, I'm just going to be showing you what I do. And then you can kind of take uh, some of it uh, and put it into your own photography. So the first thing I want to do uh, is talk about the kit. As I said, we've got uh, um, the Portalite Square and a Portalite oct Octa, a part of the kit. Um, they're metered ident identical, so in other words, uh, they're both to f4. So I'm using the Sekonic Light Master Pro. This is linked to the Elinchrom lights, and then I can choose whether I'm going to be in Group One, which is on my left hand side, and then Group Four, which is on my right hand side. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, um, and I can decide to either fire them independently or together, depending on what I've set on the trigger on the top here. That's the basic kit. Camera, um, five, 5D Mark III still, 24 to 105 kit, uh, kit lens, using it on the, F, uh, the F4. I'm, tether I'm tethering like I always do in studio, um, using the tethered cables, uh, so it's tether tools. Uh, and this basically is a USB from camera going off to the, lap, uh, the laptop and obviously brand, uh, Brandon behind the scenes. You'll get to see his face today because he's going to be a dad. Yeah, uh, and basically uh, on the tether tool, in fact, later on we'll show you this little kind of uh, jerk stop, uh, stopper that has saved so much damage to the ports on the side of the camera. Um, over the years, you cannot believe it, worth every single penny. We're capturing into uh, Capture One um, just because it's very, very fast compared to Lightroom. And obviously, Brandon will be showing the images as we're going along. So, uh, as far as the uh, set uh, setup is concerned, I've basically just got a grey blanket and a white a white one. We're going to be shooting a low key and a, a kind of a higher key style of imagery. Uh, so you should you should be able to do it without any trouble. We've just got a ba a baby hoop within here. Um, you can make them yourself. Um, or you can, go, you can go down to a cushion shop or something like that and then basically vel Velcro a long skinny kind of sausage cushion in into a baby hoop and things really, or you can make them yourself and things like we used to. So uh, let's have a look at an image straight away, shall we? So basically I've got the lights coming in from the 10 o'clock and the 2 o'clock position. Remember the clock face where we photograph. Cam uh, camera's at the 6. Baby is looking towards the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, 2 o'clock light. So basically, obviously, by having these in the position here, it, it works well. If baby was to look at me, there's going to be no light, and I'll show you that now. So let's kind of have a quick, quick look. So there's both our lights going off together, and you can see a uh, little Polly in there, who's just a doll. <laughs> yeah. um, kind of looks pretty life, uh, lifelike anyway. Um, 
I, I kind of quite like the wide angle effect. Uh, the first thing that I will do, though, is encourage you to use more of the actual zoom of the lens, especially if you like this drop fo focus effect. Uh, so in other words, um, let me just recompose that. So now by using exactly the same aperture, nothing else changed. All I've done is move it back a little bit. But where I was before was around about the 70 mil. Now I'm on the 105. So this allows the kind of the drop off in the fo uh, focus to happen very, very fast. Whereas if we're using the wide angle lens, the drop in focus isn't as kind of uh, um, uh, gradual. It, it kind of, it, it's just very, very slow. And I want that instant kind of drop away. One of my bugbears is seeing photographers with kind of medium zoom lenses and basically shooting uh, on a wider angle lens, leaving all this space around when they should shoot like a film photographer. In other words, composing camera uh, wherever you can to actually get the right kind of look and feel with it and things really. I like to shoot f4 and not below that. The, re the reason being I need some depth of field. So in other words, I really do want... The, the depth from ear to ear, if the baby's on its side and so on with it and things really. So where, whereas the feet are slight, slightly toward, uh, towards me, that wouldn't be sharp at all with it and things really. I like a studio stand or a tripod when I'm photographing with, ba uh, with babies anyway. I usually work on a, ca a cable release. Um, but this allow, allows me to just kind of quick, uh, quickly change the shot. Yeah, whatever it's going to be. Obviously... Zoom, zoom in, and then obviously because I'm, you, I'm using the kind of the, po uh, the posing ring, I can basically just go in and slightly move the, uh, the pose left, left and right and so on, and at the same point I can obviously go in and just kind of uh, record the information. Uh, as far as if baby looks at me, all right, it's terrible. Let's just turn to, uh, to do this. Obviously, if this was a newborn, we wouldn't have done it like I just did. Nice and gentle kind of positioning uh, for any, ba any baby, in fact. But if we were trying to do this image, if you get the lighting wrong, you can see you get rubbish. That's the main thing. And so if all of a sudden you've got a baby who's beginning to kind of move around or wake up or whatever, or whatever it would be, we definitely need to start to actually reposition our, light, our lighting. Yes? And basically then, if Polly has kind of moved around, I just get back into my position. And because I've moved the light around to the eight, uh, the eight o'clock position, now I've got a very, very sellable image. All right? Let's, let's look at what each of these lights do. Because one is a key, a key light where we're working now. The other one is a separation light. Okay? So group one, that's my key, my key light. You make decision which one is going to be yours. If I shoot that one now where she looks at me, we can see the depth of shadow running on the right-hand side, okay, in a very lower key. If we shoot the, just the, sep the separation light, obviously we're going to get that little bit of a kind of a, an ed edge lighting and so on. <clears throat> Let's um, just bring this light in around to the back so you can see it doesn't have to be off to the one side. It can be coming in from the rear, so the 12 o'clock position, and that will obviously change the way that it is uh, lighting baby as such, really. So you can see now it's more light actually onto the hair, uh, the top of the head and things, really. So if you shoot both of those again, that's the both lights together. We get great light actually coming onto the face. We get a lovely separation of the, ba of the, ba of the baby there. If uh, you find that you're not li liking the highlight as much, just move away the light a little bit, and then pretty much um, around about two feet is about a stop, okay? So we call that the step stop. And now all of a sudden, the, high, the highlight on the head will be diffused down just that little bit more. So, simple kind of setup. But when the baby is looking towards the, uh, uh, the back, away, away from camera position, Obviously, what we don't want to do is have the frontal light on because that is really not going to give us a great look in photograph. We want to have, or going back to the 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock position, all kind of just demonstrating uh, the effect of just the one light itself. Remember, we kind of come backwards first. We, re we recompose before we just go to the wide angle effect. I like to put the focus spot on baby's eyes. If not, it'll be on baby's nose here, so between the two. 
and then straight away, oh my God, that looks like a real babe, a baby, doesn't it? Um, but all that lovely fleshiness and everything else. If you weren't a fan of this deep reflection here, and you didn't have anything other than a white blag a blanket, you could actually hold that up, and that will actually act as a little bit of a reflector. You can just see that along the side of the face there. Let me just go get my reflector. I forgot to bring that in. So in this, in this case, I could use the likes of uh, the reflector in here just to actually do it. So let's do it with and without. So this is uh, without. So we can see the depth of the shadow on the ear. Then we bring in the reflector. It's only a, uh, a kind of a, a, a diffusion one with just a silver, a silver stripe on the opposite side. But if we look at that now, watch the ear. That's really where we're going to see life kind of come alive. And it really depends on how much you want. The closer and the different surf surfaces you use, of course, will give you a different uh, effect anyway. Right. So we've kind of got our, ba our basic shot. We can work o overhead as well. So if we want that kind of look and feel, the same thing. Let me just uh, unhook myself. And then if I'm going to do the above shot, um, because I don't have a tilt screen, the first thing I need to do, in fact, is just um, move the kind of the focus position to where I want it to be. So now we've got that kind of image. What I would say, though, especially if you're using a, ba a baby hoop, is at this, at this point, we can just move the, ba uh, the baby down just a little bit more. So we're getting a little bit more light onto the face. But, main, uh, but mainly, what we're, look, uh, we're looking at is uh, so the eyes are going to be looking up towards us more. So in other words, you can still move um, to a closer up position and get a great shot. And obviously, if baby's legs are kind of sp uh, uh, playing all over the place, then you might want to go into a kind of a simple baby wrap and things, really. There's loads of cheese, uh, cheese cloths that you can buy online. The likes of here and here, depends on the kind of style. Or you can go down to Ikea and buy some net curtains. And um, basically, um, as long as they're around about a foot in width, as a rule of thumb, uh, the cheese cloths obviously stretch. But around about a foot in height, and then around about two and a half feet long, it's pretty much going to be enough. Allow, allow yourself, uh, ba baby, to be in around about um, uh, six to 12 inches within here, and then basically wrap all this, wrap up the, the legs, and actually put it behind the shoulder, and then obviously just kind of re-wrapping across the, ba uh, the baby, getting them nice and tucked in tight. Um, but you, you can see straight away that we can kind of change those images. But look how flat that light is. To remember, from here, if we just use the group four for a minute, which is just that light, and we photograph it, we've got quite a, a deep, low-key style of image. Yeah? If I start to move the, cam uh, the camera position now, and now where the, ba uh, the baby's face is more visible to cam uh, the, uh, the camera, we can see that it kind of looks more illuminated. And that's just because we moved the camera position. Right, let's do something very, very similar, but just in the higher key, yeah? So I'm just going to pop the camera back on studio stand. Remember, that orange cable is the Tether Tools um, USB connector. That goes off into the laptop. So obviously, at this, at this stage, we would hand ba a baby off to mum. Don't plug, uh, plonk them down like I, like I just did, of course. And then uh, just uh, a curtain or a wrap or whatever you've got. Uh, this is, again, one of the I IKEA kind of bag kits. Um, this is going to give us a much higher, whiter, light, lighter style of imagery. And uh, we can start to just peg this out. I'm just using, in fact, the last, last of light. Uh, magnetic uh, support stand and I've just got the little clamps here to kind of clip it on so it's not going to kind of come away. The great, the great thing about using these on a stand of course is that we can change the shape, the angle and the tautness as well with it and things really. So uh, very simple to kind of add an extra stand into uh, your bag especially if you're traveling or having to pack down uh, quite a lot of stuff. So let's just put this just back into here. Baby's going to come back in, of course. We, you know, it depends on you whether you're going to have nappies on or nappies off. If we've got nappies on, um, obviously we need to uh, cover with the likes of um, 
the blanket anyway, but even with a nappy off, you're still going to need to do the same thing. But uh, we just want to make sure, because obviously we need to hide the genitalia. Uh, the genitalia. Um, so let's now, let's go back to a higher key image. So <clears throat> straight away, without doing anything else, let's take the same shot that we did around about five minutes ago. Baby is looking towards me, of course. Yep, let me just push that in. Zooming in, like I was saying. And let's have a look at the image. So we've got a nice light. Remember, that is just the backlight itself, okay? That's all, all that is. So if, ba if Baby was looking back towards that oc octa, um, it, it, we'll, we've got away with it, okay? If she's looking just towards mummy here, whatever it would be. But just with the likes of mum by here, and then just a little rattle, if the, ba uh, the baby does have some head fu function, then that'll work. Or, of course, we're just going to get mum to actually come in and basically move the baby's head around towards the position that we want. And then, of course, we're back into getting that great image with just the one light itself. And it would help if I didn't move the studio stand. Okay, so that's just the one light. Let's move um, Polly's uh, head back in. To, oh, it's lovely from here. In fact, Polly, it's a real shame you're just a doll, love, because you look great. Um, let me just bring this around. So let me shoot with just that one light again for you to see. So uh, again, depth of field, focus point, looks brilliant. Remember, that's just the one light. If we switch the, all the lights on, so that's both of these now, we're going to add too much light to baby's ear. So now all of a sudden it's too bright. This is where it's flat flesh and we don't really get all this lovely modeling light and so on. So when would we use the two, uh, the two lights? The first thing would be is obviously for the looking towards the, cam uh, the camera position, we need more light coming on to, ba uh, to baby, yes? So let's just lower this down. We've got our light coming into ba ba uh, baby here. Let's just move back a little bit more. Let's zoom in, focus in on the eyes. Let's do the test shot first. So this is both lights, but realistically, it's this one light is the main one. We need to make sure we've got catch lights within the, ba uh, the baby's eyes. So just a fraction. Notice how I haven't really positioned this going at the baby. It's more at the feather, so it's washing across, yeah? So just from there again, let's do a quick shot. Lovely kind of high key, light and bright image. And remember, I haven't changed any power at all. If I wanted to put less uh, uh, kind of sep separation on, ba on baby and put a little bit more light on the actual background, we can put the light into this position, making sure we kind of feather it off uh, the, ba the baby as much as we can. And then what we're gonna do is obviously lighten and brighten the background itself. Okay, so watch the background get brighter, just that little bit, but now we've got less se separation on ba baby and a lot more kind of light on the background. If we did want a very, very high, a high key bright and light, uh, pretty much the first thing I would do to save changing any powers is basically change the height of the light to kind of just give a little bit more focus in, yet, yeah, and then just kind of put it up by a full stop. So I was at 1.8 1, 1 on that light. Now I'm on 2.8 uh, 2 of that light. And so now that is going to be a much whiter and brighter kind of high key. But look how it's blowing out that right hand cor corner. That's where one, one thing at a time or meter to kind of control it. Remember, by, by default, it's two, it's two stops difference between the key, the, the key light and the background light, but we don't always want to kind of blow everything out to white and bright. So that's the two, uh, the two lights from the, cam uh, the camera position. I can choose my group, four for that one, and I can lower the power down more, as long as it hasn't reached its minimum. And then basically, I just put him back onto all again. If we watch the difference, watch how it dims down in that background now. And you can see straight away how we've kind of brought in back that tone. However, for me, I'm going to go back to setup one, where basically this light is doing two things. It's light in the background, and it's light in the, ba ba uh, the baby. That's absolutely key for me. And at that point, I would want to re-meter to make sure this light is, is good. 
as far as the perfect exposure is bang on to f4 again. Okay, so we've got there both our low key and our higher key image. And if we want to look what just the group one does, so in other words, just this light, and we fire that one, we can see in close there, we've got that lovely catch light within the eye. We've got great tone of the, ba ba of the baby. I think that uh, exposure on her, you know, is not quite right on there, unless uh, it's right, you know, it's, it's down a stop in its position. Let's go back here. Let's see the correct exposure on her with that one light. Beautiful. There's a subtle dif difference in there, but why fix it? And I'm only looking on the television screen. You can't see it out shot. That's the only way I get to see the image. When I'm tethered here, it takes the information away from the camera and it's feeding it out to my screens. So one light, the backlight, and both lights together. So when are we going to use the light in towards the uh, 8 o'clock position and the feather? It's when the baby is looking more towards me. Um, pretty much if you think about a feather light technique, so if we're doing the headshot photography, this light really needs to be around about here to get the same kind of look and feel and drama within the image. And the great, the great thing about this light is they're so light that I can basically hand hold uh, the light itself to drastically change the image if I'm unsure quite where I want that light to be. Okay, so let's get Brandon's arm, arm in, shall we? He's just about to become a dad. Not really, just actually uh, for uh, today. Brandon, if you just hang on for a minute, mate, just while I get ready. So I'm going to do all the kind of the backlight on here first. Uh, Brand, uh, Brandon's not very good with, ba uh, with ba uh, babies, inclu including dolls. So we are going to lose Polly. We're going to lose the nap... Uh, the Nappy as well for now. Brandon, if you get her on your arm like we rehearsed, please. I'm just going to drop this background off. So at this point, I'm just going to drop off here. I'm going to just move my background support off towards the side. And we're going to get ready to actually bring this light around, in fact, okay? Brandon, if you go from that side for me. So let's... Uh, from that side, yeah. As we rehearsed, don't overthink it. He's a bit embarrassed being on screen, all right? Okay, we need a flat hand, hand out straight. That's good. Okay, so as is, black and white, let me just turn my camera into mono. And this is going to be rubbish. <laughs> it's always good to know when the photograph is going to be bad before you take, you take it. That's just group one. This is group four. And then these are both lights together. But it's still rubbish. Why? It's just like we explained, because there's no light coming toward, uh, towards us. So the first thing that we, uh, we can do here is bring our light around. Yep. And now from above, and if I can, this is going to bring more light and illumination in towards baby's face. We'd usually go, can you go a flat hand for me? Raise, uh, raise up the hand. Bend the elbow a little bit more. There you go. Hang on a second. Keep it. Just bring the hand to me just a touch more. No, just the tip of the fingers. There you go. If you move away from me just a touch more, move your feet that way. And now bring the hand around to me. There we go. So I definitely need to bring this light in. Let's just go to group four so you can see it. That's just the one light now. Your parents are going to be shocked. Pop. Pop Polly down you. Be careful with her. Just pop her in there. She works hard. So, uh, again, it uh, depends on how much dynamic that you want within the image. Um, are they showing on screen? Okay, so um, as we go up here, we look at those images. You, you can see what it's like with the lights coming in from behind. That's our group um, uh, four going off. This is our group one coming off. And that is obviously when the light has moved around towards the front. And you can see how it basically overfills 
Really what we want to do is get that light just, just in front and kind of coming down uh, just, uh, just that little bit more. Good attempt, though, at becoming a dad there, uh, Brandon. He, he went, I'm going to be a what? <laughs> that was about 10, about 10 minutes before we went live. Right, let's just quickly finish off. We something a little bit more dramatic. Uh, dramatic. Um, <coughs> I've got the uh, uh, flower wall that we're seeing here. And basically, let me just pop her nappy back on. Um, I try and um, have something. In fact, let's wrap her quickly. Uh, the nappy could have been on at that point anyway. Uh, you, you, you usually wrap a baby actually on your lap, of course. I'm just going to pop her into the poser. Just uh, hands down. Pedaling through there. It's upside down, Mark. Just back in here again. Nice and tight across the top, and then basically just wrapping baby round. This is why you'd have to do it on the likes of your lap, just to make sure the bottom is nice and secure, and eventually wrapping through. Let's, we're just going to pop Polly just onto the red background. Yeah, obviously, this would be a lot more care, please, if you're doing it for real. Lighting then has to come in. Where, where's this going to be? I think we can get away with the one light source now, but really what we want to do is actually make sure we've got this concentrated light onto the, ba uh, the baby itself. Um, we would tend to actually remove one of the panels, the inner panels of this um, flower wall, um, or kind of pack her head with just a little bit more cloth because uh, these flowers are on a kind of a, a plastic mesh. Let me just uh, group four mark. Meter and pole, F4. Brilliant. So at this, at this stage, I'm just going to come off tripod itself. Dee, dee, dee. So let's look at the shot straight out of camera first. And let's pop it into color would help because it is a very colorful image. Let's make sure she's in the frame. So just tethering across my shoulder for a minute. Just have a look on the television screen just to check I'm in the right place. So I just need to come over more. So we've got quite a dynamic image straight away, haven't we? Without any huge work because we've made ourselves a kind of bit of a dynamic photograph. We can add even more dynamic into here by changing the um, softer softer light, i.e. the soft box itself, into either the likes of a grid or a honeycomb, yeah? Let's use a grid. Uh, has a little bit more control than the, honey, uh, than the snoot itself. So you can see already from, as soon as I pop that light deflector on here, doo -doo -doo, here we go. Making sure she's being lit. I need to meet her now to make sure it's, per it's perfect. Obviously, I do, I do this without baby in. I've just turned the power down on that just a touch. Quick shot. One second, just recomposing. So look at the difference of how the overall light, and now we're into that spotlight effect. It, it's pretty di uh, dynamic, isn't it, from just kind of changing the accessory and especially when you start to make the sub the subject very very small in the frame you can see the fall uh, the fall off of the light there and that's us done so i hope you've enjoyed a little bit on how to do some really e easy ba uh, baby photography with absolutely the minimal amount of kit and the least amount of expenditure remember um stu uh, studio flash and accessories are kind of what you invest in and into for your career, as it were. Yes, you upgrade them, you get bigger and more powerful than everything else, but a 500 quid kit like we've got here from Ellingcrom is, is an easy starting point, and the only accessory in addition to the kit that I bought was basically the honeycomb itself. As far as the wraps are concerned and so on, they're readily available, but I'll, I'll encourage you to kind of look at your local kind of material shops and everything else. 
in the same way as far as the simple kind of posing and the kind of the uh, textures that you decide to actually use within your baby photography. That's always down to you, of course. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.